Hello, welcome to class this month. It's torso day. <sighs> So you know how like people at the gym go, it's leg day, it's arm day, it's core day, whatever. So um, there's a lot of exercises where we actually talk about the arms and legs a lot. And we talk about them because they're actually moving from the center. But this class, we're going to focus on what our center is doing. And as opposed to like just what the arms and legs are doing. And also how we can use the arms and legs to make this better. So it's torso day. You're going to be thinking about your torso. We're going to flex it. We're going to extend it. We're going to tall back it. We're going to twist it. We're going to side bend it. We're going to do all the things. We're going to start with one heavy spring on. And then lie down. Headrest to be up. Heels to the other toes apart. And the reason we're doing one spring with footwork is it really does force you to move from your center because if you move from your legs, your feet will slip off. So here we go. Take a deep breath in. And press your arms and press your arms and legs. Press your legs out <laughs> and come all the way in. So in this moment, what you can do is put your heels of your hands on your hip points and your fingers on your pubic bone. And going out and in double just double checking is your pelvis tipping in either direction as you go out and in it should just stay the same right your legs can move independently of your torso they are connected to it and that that independent movement is strengthening it but just because i bend my knees doesn't mean my pelvis has to tip just because i straighten my legs doesn't mean it has to tip you can keep your hands there if you want or go onto your arches out and in so again moving from your center so think belly button working in toward your center and out to the crown of your head so that your torso goes out and then pulling your sit bones to your heels so that you can pull the carriage in and then come onto those heels and we go out in it pressing on the inner heel and the outer heel hugging the outer hips so as you get to the heels, it may, you may have slowed down a bit, but if you can close your eyes to go deep inside your body and just notice the connections that you're making. And then come onto the balls of your feet and press out. Stay out here, lower the heels, turn the heels apart, lift them up and bring them together and then turn them out. Lower them down, squeeze them together to lift. And then you go down, turn them out, lift them up, squeeze them together, then turn them out, lower them down, squeeze together, lift. Down and together, open, lift, squeeze together at the top, open, lower, squeeze together at the bottom, and lift. One more time like that. So you're just kind of going one way and then the other way. And that should all happen inside those hip sockets to connect you more to your torso. Okay, staying on this one red spring, one red spring, you might be on a red, I'm on a regular color, I'm on no color. How about that? Okay, pre I'm thinking about your spring so much, I put a color on mine. Double check that your feet are turned out, press out, lift your head and chest up, and pump your arms for your 100 here. We are not getting out of footwork with full springs or the 100, by the way. But I just want you to take this moment without too heavy of springs to notice how long can I make my torso? I'm in flexion, right? I'm curled up, but how long can it be? So that I'm not tucking my tailbone, but I'm not sticking it out. I'm also not sitting way up here. And then lower it all the way down. Okay, so sit on up, drop, uh, so don't drop actually let's put all your springs on so three to four heavy springs on and then we're just going to do five of the footwork of each so we're not going to do a lot because we did plenty with the one spring but now you know how much your torso your center can work to do your footwork right so as you add the legs in with these springs can that additional spring setting just add more to how your center is working or do you find yourself trying to leg this whole thing. Come on to your arches, out and in and out and in. And then onto your heels.
and then back onto the balls of your feet and then lower and lift your heels. Keeping the heels together this time. Then one more of these. So hopefully you felt that more in your center than in your legs. It didn't be like, oh my God, my legs. Um, if you felt only legs in that, then I want you to go back to doing the single spring for a bit more just to really integrate that feeling. <sighs> Handles into your hands, lift your head and chest up, lift your legs up for your hundred. And now can you get that same length in your flexion that you had when you had the foot bar? Ankles hugging towards each other. Yep, even though the toes are apart, doesn't mean that the ankles are splaying, right? Collarbones are wide, so you can have width in the center, width in your torso. These pumps should just help you get longer in your center. And then rest. If you're like, what? How does that happen? Well, let's find out as we go into our overhead. Drop down to two springs. If you're not going overhead, you'll do coordination. We'll join you in a moment. So as I use these handles, they help connect my arms to my back and allow my upper body and my torso to go in one direction so that my lower body and my torso can go in the other direction. So pressing the arms down, taking the legs overhead, reach the legs up and then lower the waist, strengthen the legs away and lift the arms. And again, take the arms down, legs up. And as you pull your waist away, your head is going the opposite direction. So you might wanna look at your body, but if you do, that's gonna ruin the length in your torso. And again, arms down, legs up and pull the waist away. <sighs> One more time. Can you stand on your shoulders so much that your torso can lengthen to the sky? <sighs> and then bend your elbows, press the legs out, arms go down. Coordination. These legs are being sent out from the torso and the arms are helping you connect your arms to your back to get more out of it. So can you find something extra in your center as you do your coordination for three more? Or are your legs tossing your chest around? <sighs> Woo. Okay, so we've done tall back and flexion. We're actually gonna do another flexion and a tall back in our rowing. So the rowing can feel like it's all about the arms. We're gonna drop down to a spring. I actually just want you to focus on your center. So what do you need to do in your arms and your legs to get more out of your center versus what do you do to your center to get more out of your arms and legs? So here we go. Knuckles together and then pull the waist back. What do you have to do in your legs to get more waist back? As you open the arms, pressing them back, oh, what do we need to do to get more lift of our ribs off of our thighs? So as you circle those arms around, can that connection help you get more out of your center here? Two more a little fast. Pull it, press and dive and reach. And again, round back, open, pull, press and dive and reach. You can play with that if you're like, ooh, I got something there, stick with it. Otherwise, elbows up, lean back with the elbows up, <sighs> round your spine and press and circle and again elbows up waist bends over the thighs are you getting longer in your round shape or are you flattening over your legs i want your there to be this space between your thighs and your ribs. Now, it might not actually be there based on the shape of your chest or your body, but the energy of them is going opposite directions, okay? Spin around. Because we're trying to get the longest torso, and I don't have a very long torso. I actually have very long legs. So here we go. Thumbs into the handle, squeeze the legs together, and then just see what you have to do to your legs right now to lift taller. <sighs> 